Hello, my name is Ryan Manook and I'm a solutions consultant with FileMaker. Thanks for joining me for today's Idea to iPad webinar, where we'll spend an hour or so turning your submitted ideas into FileMaker solutions for the iOS and demonstrate how easy it is to get started creating those custom solutions with FileMaker. But first, I'd like to spend the first five minutes on some brief housekeeping notes and chat about the idea that we picked. For the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrus, uh, Citrus Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now, throughout today's presentation, you will have the opportunity to type in and ask questions. So let's talk briefly about how to do that. Go to Control Panel, click on the Question section, enter your question, and click Send. We'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation, but remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. So as usual, we had a high participation rate with a wide range of entries. So we created a pool of submissions from this session, combined with the previous requests, we grouped them into high-level categories or tasks, and then we chose an idea from the most popular one to demo. But keep in mind, FileMaker will continue holding idea to iPad events in the future, so if your idea wasn't selected this time, keep submitting them for use as a potential demo. And while your use case may differ, we'll still be covering some common techniques and features that you can apply to your solution. Now your requests were similar to the ones that you're seeing on your screen right now, but based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry is a document management solution. Now, a common goal for a document management system is to organize and connect multiple related documents. Maybe you want to associate all of the appropriate contracts or licenses to a vendor, or you wanted to track the different versions of a document, or combine photos, sound files, and movie files to a common production. There are a lot of ways that you can approach building a document management solution in FileMaker. But today, we're going to build out a submission centered on the management of acceptable use policy documents. Now these documents outline the rules for network usage compliancy and are commonly required to be signed annually before one is given access to a computer, university, or an organization's network. Now the idea also requests a level of security so users who log in can only see their record and can't sign another person's document. So we're gonna spend about the next uh, 30, 40 minutes building that out, but before we do that, let's go ahead and provide some context for the solution that we're building. Uh, let's all assume that we're a part of a company and let's take a look at our attendee list here. Um, we'll say Carol. Carol is our boss. Okay. Now, as noted, our company annually requires staff to sign an acceptable use uh, policy document and our current process is as follows. This acceptable use policy document is emailed to every employee. The employee prints it out. They sign it and give it to their manager. The manager then manually tallies who has signed the document in a spreadsheet, which is then sent to IT. And then the IT ends up with multiple spreadsheets from multiple managers that they have to combine. And not to mention that IT now has spreadsheets which are potentially out of date as soon as it reaches them. Now, Carol knows that every year we're spending too many wasted cycles on this and it's costing the company time and money. And that's when I get called into her office. I work on the IT team and Carol knows that there has to be a more effective more efficient way to facilitate this process. And Carol wants the following. A tool that allows IT and management team to be able to view who or who hasn't signed a doc while walking around the company. A solution that maximizes our workflow and allows us to combine all of our related data into one custom solution. And a level of security to make sure that the staff signing the documents are who they say they are. So. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I can get this on an iPad. So I'm going to create a new database, share it with FileMaker server, and then connect to it with FileMaker Go on the iPad. And let's go ahead and walk through how we do that. So there's a lot of different ways that we can get started creating a solution in FileMaker. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually take that spreadsheet that uh, we just took a look at and drag that directly into my FileMaker uh, Pro Advanced icon. Okay. Now, right off the bat, FileMaker recognizes this is an Excel file, and I'm going to decide to choose the first row of uh, fields, which are typically the names labeling the columns. So click OK. And we'll call this uh, Compliance Details. 
So I'll save that to the desktop. And just like that, we have a FileMaker database. Those columns converted to these different fields. And we're taking a look at FileMaker's table view, which kind of looks like a spreadsheet. We also have another view, which is called a form view, and we can look at records individually, okay? So there's a lot of things we can do at this point. Maybe we could start building out that security. Um, we could start adding new features and functionality, but the main thing we wanna do right now is make sure again that we can get this onto the iPad. So I wanna share this to my FileMaker server. So I'm gonna click on the share icon and I'm gonna select upload to FileMaker server. Now I have FileMaker server running in the background of my machine and FileMaker server is the hub of your, um, uh, your solution. It provides the security, the reliability, and the performance, and just host your files. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my credentials for FileMaker Server. Okay, looks like I mistyped that. Okay, now I'm going to upload my database, and I'm going to open it up with FileMaker Pro. Now you'll notice that it looks like we're looking at the same database that we had a minute ago, but up at the top, you'll see compliance details and then in parentheses, Ryan Manook's FileMaker server indicating that I'm accessing a hosted file. So the next step I'm gonna do is get this onto my iOS device. And in order to show you how to do that, I'm gonna launch this Reflector app and it's gonna allow me to airplay the iPad that I have in my hands right now onto my screen. So give me one minute to do that. Okay. We'll mirror that over. And again, this is the iPad Air that I have on my screen right now, or in my hands right now. So down at the bottom, I'm going to tap on the FileMaker Go icon. So I'll tap on that. And this is FileMaker Go 13. I can view recent files. I can, if I tap on device, this shows me all the files that I have locally on this um, device, which is a, a great alternative for uh, working in my data if I'm in a uh, area with a bad network or no network connection at all. Then if I tap on host icon on the left side, this shows me all of the file or all of the machines that are currently hosting FileMaker files on my local area network. If I wanna access a machine outside of my local area network, I could just tap um, add host and enter that IP address. But I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down this list and I'll see uh, Ryan Manook's FileMaker server. So I'll go ahead and tap on that. And then we'll see the compliance details database that we just created. So I'll go ahead and tap on that as well. And there's our solution and I can pinch and zoom just like you would expect on an iOS device. I remember how I talked about how difficult it was to maintain, um, maintain the spreadsheet when multiple users are, um, are entering data. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's say that we're looking at Lori's uh, record and a week ago she changed groups from human resources to uh, finances. Okay, she joined the finance department so I'm just gonna tap into that field on FileMaker Go and I'll update her record by typing in uh, finance. Now watch what happens when I commit this record. Take a look at uh, the FileMaker Pro on the left side of my screen, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and commit this record in FileMaker Go. And just like that, Lori's, uh, re Lori's record is updated to finance. So it doesn't matter how you're accessing this hosted file on Mac, Windows on the desktop, the iOS or uh, in a web browser, everybody is gonna see this change, this change is automatic. Let's take it a step further. Let's say that it was a little bit premature to uh, have Lori join the finance department. It, it didn't uh, go through just yet. So I'm gonna um, change that back to human resources. And at the same time, we have another user in the office who is updating uh, the contact information. And they noticed that Lori's uh, email needs to be updated as well. So we have two people trying to edit this file. Watch what happens when in the FileMaker Pro window, someone tries to uh, edit this record. We get this message saying, hey, someone's already modifying this record. You have to wait until they're finished. And this is what we call automatic record locking. So you could have hundreds of people viewing your records, but only one person is gonna be able to edit at a time. And what that means is that you're always gonna have one version of the truth. And you can see when I commit that record in, in FileMaker Go again, it displays over on the FileMaker Pro side. Okay, so we dragged an Excel spreadsheet into FileMaker, shared it with FileMaker Server, and connected to it with FileMaker Go on the iPad. And really, it was just two things, just dragging and dropping a file and hosting it with FileMaker Server. So in just a few minutes, I was able to provide access to our information on a computer or an iOS device from anywhere in the world.
and any changes made are seen everywhere immediately, unlike having all of our information spread across multiple spreadsheets. So I'm feeling pretty good that I can prove to Carol that our first set of criteria is met, but now I wanna make sure that I can create a layout designed for our workflow and optimize for the iOS that also displays all of the related information, or in this, in this scenario, really just all of our uh, related documents like the AUP forms. So I'm gonna create a new layout in FileMaker Pro, create relationships between staff and documents and display related records for each uh, individual employee. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how we would do that. I'm gonna shut down this reflector for a second and go back into my FileMaker Pro. Anytime we're, we're editing or, uh, or making changes to the layout of uh, our solution, it's always done in FileMaker Pro. And up in this right corner, we have this Edit Layout button, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And I'm gonna to go to the Layouts menu and select New Layout Report, and we get this new layout wizard. I'm gonna call this Compliance Details for iPad. And I'm gonna to choose to build out a uh, layout for the touch device, select the iPad. It's a form and we finally get to choose, um, do you wanna build out in a, orient a portrait mode or a uh, landscape orientation? I'm gonna choose landscape orientation for this uh, layout. So I'll click finish. Okay, so what happened? Well, FileMaker has given us a layout that matches the dimensions of a, um, uh, of the uh, iPad in a landscape mode. And it's also given us a touch theme. And there's over 60 themes that you can choose from in FileMaker. And you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. So for example, if I see enlightened to enlightened touch, luminous, luminous touch, sophisticated, sophisticated touch, the touch themes are designed for the iOS. They're gonna have larger objects and larger fonts, just like you would expect. So let's go ahead and stick with the sophisticated touch. We'll click okay. And now I need to get my information over onto the layout. And information is stored in fields in FileMaker. And we have this brand new tool in FileMaker 13, which makes it uh, easy to uh, put your fields on your layout. It's called a field picker. Okay, and here's the fields that were created when we dragged that Excel file into FileMaker. And in order to get a field onto your layout, you just have to click a field. I'm gonna choose to put a label right on top of my field and drag it right onto the layout just like that. Again, click a field. You can use uh, like the shift key or control keys to uh, grab multiple fields at once and drag it onto my layout. And you'll notice uh, we have these blue lines and we call these the dynamic guides and they help you align uh, your objects uh, a lot easier. Okay, so it looks pretty good there. And I'll just grab all of these and bring them down a bit onto my layout. Just like that, perfect. We probably wanna have a photo of the employee as well. Just make it easier when we're walking around with the um, solution in our hands to make sure that the, the record that we're looking at is uh, truly for uh, the person that uh, we're talking to. So um, we don't have a photo field, but that's okay. We can just click this new field button right here. Okay, we'll call this photo. And I'm gonna change the field type from text to container. And container allows you to store media. So you could have, um, uh, document files, PDF files, sound files, um, uh, and movie files, uh, all within uh, this particular field type. I'm gonna choose to not bring a label and drag that over onto our layout, again, using the dynamic guides to help me align. Okay, and I'll just draw this out a little bit. And then I'll just grab all of the fields to make them a little bit larger. Okay, that's simple. So let's keep building out. Let's say that I want to have my company logo on all of the records. I wouldn't create a container field that uh, for that. Um, all I need to do is just take that image, that logo image, and put it directly onto my layout. And I'll put that right into the right corner of my layout, and that will appear on all of my records. And now maybe I want to add a text label. I'll call this Compliance Details. Okay. And we'll make this font a little bit larger. Uh, 36 font sounds good. Okay, and again, using my dynamic guides to align my objects. All right, so let's go ahead and save this layout and take a look at um, uh, all of our changes in browse mode. In browse mode, this is where you uh, make the uh, edits and, and add data and, and uh, enter data, okay? And you can see as we scroll through records, all of the uh, information that uh, we pulled from the uh, Excel spreadsheet appear here, okay? 
Now, what can we do with this uh, photo container field? Well, if you we want to add a photo to a record, it's as simple as drag and drop. So I'm going to open up my folder here. I have uh, photos of all my employees. And I'm just going to drag that right into a container field, just like that. Let's go add one for uh, Jill. Here's Jill's record. And we'll add one more. We'll add uh, Chris's photo. That simple. Okay, so we still have uh, a lot of space on this right hand side, and we want to make sure that we're tracking the um, acceptable use policy forms and, and who signed them. So let's go back into layout mode, and there's different ways that we can approach this. And one way is maybe we want to create some container fields just like we did for the, um, uh, the photo field. So I could call this uh, document one changes to a container and add another field document two uh, we'll keep the labels off and we'll bring them onto the layout okay and we'll make these a little bit larger so this is one way to approach it we could you know statically add uh, uh, more container fields to the layout uh, it's not very flexible if I'm going to, uh, if I don't know like the fixed amount of um, documents that I'm going to need for every, um, for every record. So for example, if you know that you have a vendor and there's only three types of licenses that are always going to be associated um, uh, for this particular layout, then maybe that's a good option. But for something like the acceptable use policy form, where every year we're uh, going to uh, have to add a new um, a new form and a new signature and track that, this might not be the best approach really. Uh, in this format, I could only uh, fit uh, really uh, two other containers. So we're only really logging like four years here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this, okay? And let's get rid of these fields as well. And what I like to do is actually create a table specific for the documents and associate that to the employees and that way, the uh, we can have we can save a lot of space by showing multiple related records in what we call a portal. And I want to show you how we do that. I'm going to click on this uh, manage database button right here in the field picker. And this is the manage database window. There's a lot of ways to get to the screen, but this is really where you can add uh, to your database schema. So we can add new tables. We can add uh, field associate fields to those tables, and we can create uh, relationships. And actually, to start, I'm just going to change uh, by default. The uh, default table takes the name of the file. I'm just going to call this uh, employees. Okay. And I'm going to create a new table called documents. So I'll create that. And I want to add some fields to the documents table. Okay. So we need a uh, document ID. We always need a unique identifier. And to make sure that it's a unique identifier, I'm going to click on the options button for this number field and make sure that I check in the auto enter tab to uh, auto enter a serial number. And this way, every time a new record is created, uh, that document is always guaranteed a unique number. Then I'll create a employee ID field. And this is gonna allow me to create a relationship with the uh, employee table. Probably want a uh, title for the name of the document and we'll change this to text. We'll have a document container field to store our documents. Okay. And We'll have a uh, signature a container field as well. It, with uh, FileMaker Go um, container field, you're allowed to uh, store a signature, and we're going to show you how to do that. But um, uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Then I want a uh, sign date. We'll change that to a date type. And then finally, I want a field that captures whether or not the uh, whether or not the document has been signed. And this way, you know, we'll have uh, a nice uh, uh, way that it really stands out visually for our um, IT team or management team to really kind of see that. So I'm going to create a status field, okay? And I'm actually going to turn this into a calculation because I, I don't want um, the IT team or, or the management team to have to manually type in if it's unsigned or assigned. So I'm going to turn this into a calculation. I'm going to click Create. And this is FileMaker's calculation dialog box, and you're going to see this all throughout the software. Okay, a little bit daunting at first, but really what you're looking at are all of the fields for the table, operators, and all of the preset functions. 
okay? And it cuts down on the amount of querying that you have to do in FileMaker. And what we do is combine all of these and combine it with some literal text to form different expressions that produce different results. In this scenario, since I want to know if it's unsigned or signed, I'm going to use a conditional if statement or conditional if function, okay? So we'll go down to the if. And now I have to provide my condition. So I'm going to say, use the is empty uh, function and signature field. So if the signature field is empty, my first result would be unsigned. Otherwise, it's signed. And literal text is always in uh, quotation marks. Finally, the ca uh, calculation result is going to be text. So we'll click OK there. All right. So uh, pretty good start to our documents table. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now, again, we want to show multiple related records um, to this employees table. And, and the way we show multiple related records is through an object called a portal. And we can access that through the uh, portal object in the uh, status toolbar in layout mode. I can just draw that onto my layout. But one thing we didn't do in that managed database window was actually create a relationship. So right now, this portal I can't pull from any um, tables. So let's jump back to that managed database window. And we'll go to the relationships tab. And creating a relationship in FileMaker is all about finding uh, the fields with the common values. OK, in this scenario, it's going to be the employee ID to employee ID. And to create that relationship, I'm just going to click the employee ID field from employees table and drag it right over to the employee ID field in the documents table. That's simple. And we have a relationship in FileMaker. Again, I'm just going to highlight the employee ID field click and hold and drag it over to employee ID. And right now we're telling FileMaker, hey, when the employee ID field equals the employee ID field, allow me to share that data, okay? I'm gonna jump back into this relationship and I'm gonna specify that based off this relationship, I can create uh, new records in the documents table. That's what we want because we wanna add more uh, documents to an employee. So you wanna allow that. So we'll click okay, we'll click okay again. Now, when we go to our portal, we have a related table, that documents table. So we'll select that. Okay. We'll choose to show a vertical scroll bar. And I just want to show um, one row. And in portals, a row equals a record. Okay. I'm just going to show one uh, row. And I'm going to click OK. And we could add um, a bunch of fields here from this add fields to portal window. But I'm going to cancel this because I also want to show you that in the field picker, you can also p uh, pick fields from tables that are not the current table, OK? So let's draw our portal out a little bit, give it some space. Again, this all represents one row in the portal, all right? And I'm just going to take this document field, make sure the label's off, and just drag it right onto my layout, just like that. OK, we'll make this a little bit larger. Okay, let's make this portal a little bit closer to the edge, just like that. Okay, and now we'll add some uh, fields. Let's see, let's grab these three fields. We'll pull them out vertically with a label above the field and bring them onto our layout just like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab this sign date field to align it a little bit better. And then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So it's actually within that field. Okay. There we go. And I actually want to move these fields a little bit. Put these down here. Sign date up here. And the status right here. Again, I'm using the dynamic guides to uh, align. Looks good. Bring that up. Perfect. Okay, now I'll probably add a um, a rectangle object here to help indicate that we're looking at a uh, singular record. So let me just draw a rectangle here really quickly. Okay. 
just like that. And now let's give it a different type of uh, formatting. And I'm going to use FontMaker 13's new uh, styles uh, formatting, okay, for objects and fields. So we have this uh, default look. We have accent color, which is a lighter blue. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with this accent color too here. And finally, I'm going to grab the uh, title uh, field. I'm going to choose not to bring a label over and put that directly right over top of this little uh, rectangle piece. Now we have this uh, white fill and lines for the uh, title field. So let me go back to the styles tab and I'm going to choose for uh, text fields, the minimal edit box. All right, it looks good. And I'm going to make this just a little bit larger and I'm going to change the font style so that it's always uppercase. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, our changes in browse mode. Let's exit the layout and save our changes. Okay, now if I want to um, add a uh, new record in the portal, I'm just going to um, enter some information in one of the fields. This is the AUP form for 2014. Okay, and again, if we want to add um, fields to a uh, layout, we just need to, I mean, um, if we need to add uh, a file to a container field, just need a drag and drop. There we go, just like that. Uh, you'll notice that the calculation has already kicked in, that uh, the status is unsigned because the signature field is empty. Okay, and we won't put a um, signed date. And let's go ahead and let's add a, a record for uh, Jill as well. Okay, take this form, drop it in there, and we'll do the same thing for Chris. like that. Okay. And you can see how we have, uh, uh, we can add uh, additional records in uh, that portal. Maybe you want to say this is the AUP uh, 2013 form. You can take that 2013 form and again, just drag and drop just like that. So Lori has the 2013 and 2014. Um, forms associated with her. Okay, so let's take a look at how this layout looks on the iOS device. So let's launch Reflector again. And let me minimize this FileMaker Pro. Give me a moment to bring up my iPad on AirPlay. Okay, there we are. And at the bottom left corner, you'll see we have, uh, we're looking at layout number one. I'm just gonna tap on that and select the compliance details for iPad that we've been building out. Okay, and just like how we saw the human resources and finance data change, everything that we're building out here is, uh, is automatically uh, displayed to the other devices that are accessing the solution as well. Those changes are just gonna automatically update. So this is listed as unsigned. Um, what we wanna do is go ahead and tap on the signature field. Okay, this is a container field. And you'll see that we have a option that says signature. So when I tap on that, now we can have Lori sign, accept. Notice that our calculation has now changed to sign. She's so gonna tap on the sign date. Okay, if you March 18th, looks good. And that simple. Let's keep building out. Let's close this for a second and let's bring up FileMaker Pro. I really want this status to really stand out for our um, uh, for the IT team and the management team looking at the solution. Okay, so let's go back to layout mode and let's add some conditional formatting. And conditional formatting is just what it sounds like. It changes the formatting of that field based off of a condition. It's gonna click add and we're changes to formula is and specify back to the documents table. I want to make sure that um, if the status equals unsigned, okay, if status equals unsigned, let's go ahead and make this uh, text color uh, red and we want it to be bold as well, okay? 
and I'm actually going to change the data type keyboard for this as well, this calculation field. There's nine keyboard types to choose from for FileMaker uh, Go, and I'm going to change this to a system default. Okay, that status looks good. Now let's say that uh, we we went to someone's desk, we looked at um, you know their status that they were unsigned, and we want to make sure that okay, if they weren't at their desk, we can uh, contact this person somehow. So let's go ahead and uh, set up a functionality where we can email this person. But before we do that, allow me to step out of this solution, okay, and step into our uh, starter solutions. And these are 16 uh, free starter solutions. They're built out solutions and uh, they're, they're generic enough for any company and they're fully customizable as well. So you, we talked about at the beginning, different approaches for uh, taking your idea to the iPad. And we took a Excel spreadsheet and, and drug it into FileMaker, but this is another great way. You'll see that uh, it already has uh, layouts built for the different uh, technologies. It already has layouts built for uh, the iPad, for example. And these are also a, a great resource uh, as learning tools. So you'll have some great examples for how uh, scripts are created if you want to do some reverse engineering there, or if you want to do some reverse engineering in terms of uh, the relationships and how they're set up. I also like to use these as a resource for my own layouts. Okay, so for example, I really like this email icon. So I'm just going to go to layout mode and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to uh, paste it right into my layout. All right. And we can close this invoices starter solution for now. And what I'm going to do is just resize this a little bit. Okay. And pull that up. Just a little bit larger. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to turn this into a button. So I'm going to choose a button setup. All right. And this lists all of the uh, script steps in FileMaker. There's, um, if you go to this uh, scripts menu, you can create uh, your own scripts. Um, essentially, these cut down on the amount of querying you have to do, but you combine these script steps um, into uh, an uh, organized list along with calculations, and uh, they produce uh, different tasks for you. Okay, but this one's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to use the send mail script step by itself. Okay, so I'm using send mail. I'm going to click the specify button. And in the um, to field, I want to automatically populate the value that's in the email field. Okay. And, uh, you know, we can specify a calculation in the, in the body or the message if we want. But just for now, we'll just go ahead and go with uh, this email uh, value. So we'll click OK. All right. Click OK there as well. So let's go ahead and save these changes. All right. And let's take a look at uh, this layout on our iOS device. So let me minimize that. Uh, bring up Reflector again. And give me a moment to uh, airplay this back to my desktop. There we are. OK, so here's our workflow. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the bottom right corner. And I'm going to perform a find. I'm going to perform a find for the acceptable use policy document for 2014 for a status that is unsigned. OK. Two records are found, so I'll click OK. And we have that nice uh, indicator in the status field that gets bright red. OK, this person is unsigned, really pops out. And let's say that we were at Jill's desk and uh, you know, we know that's unsigned and we want to uh, let her know that, hey, please uh, give her a reminder that she has to sign this form. I'm just going to tap on that little button we created. And there's the email that we can send with a two field populating the value in uh, uh, the email field. OK, so we created a layout optimized for iOS. We created a relationship between staff and documents tables, and we displayed related documents for each employee. So we now have a solution built to our workflow and all of our information in one custom solution. That means less time wasted on an inefficient process and more time spent on productive interactions. So we're almost ready to send Carol our solution and head out of the office well under an hour. 
But our final task is to make sure we add a layer of security so that each employee only has access to his or her record and the information entered is truly his or her information. So we want to ensure that the only person who can sign a document is the appropriate employee. So I'm going to create individual accounts for employees, create a privilege set to specify what users can do in the file, and use scripts to supplement the security. So let's go over how we would do that. Okay, back in our view here, let me just cancel this out. And let me close our reflector as well. Again, all the design changes are happening in uh, the FileMaker Pro. So we'll uh, go back to layout mode and I'm gonna go to File, Manage, Security. Okay, so within the file, uh, access is broken down in, in, in kind of like two areas, uh, accounts, like who are you, your login information, and privilege sets, well, what can you do in the file? And by default, there's three privilege sets, uh, full access, data entry only, and read only um, access. Let's create a new account for uh, Lori. We'll call it uh, Lori Delgadil. Give her a password. And as a tip, uh, you can use these three um, uh, privilege sets, but it's always a, a really good best practice to create your own privilege sets so that you're you know, you have uh, total control over what users can and can't do in your solution. So I'm going to click a new privilege set, okay? And I'm going to put employees in brackets uh, to keep up with uh, the way the other privilege sets are formatted. And then we can specify uh, a few items, okay? Records. You know, I can use the, uh, like, the global type of, um, of uh, uh, permissions based off of the, uh, the three privilege sets where I can create a, my own uh, custom privileges. And that's what I want to do, okay? I want to make sure that in the employees table, only the employee, the employee can only view the own record that is associated with them. So I'm going to actually choose a uh, limited access here. And there's our calculation window again. And in order to do this, I'm going to use um, a function out of the get functions. And get functions grab information out of the current session. So I want my current session, uh, I want to grab the account name. So I'm going to use this uh, get account name function. I'm going to say you can only view uh, records in the employees table when uh, the current account name equals uh, the value in the full name. Okay, so if Lori's logged in, Lori Delgadil, she can only view records where the full name equals Lori Delgadil. So click OK there. And edit, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, I only want the employee to edit their own record. So I'm going to use a get function again, uh, information about the current session and say, well, you can only edit a record where the uh, current account name matches uh, the value in the full name field. Okay, I don't want them to be able to create new records and I don't want them to be able to delete, but uh, we'll give them uh, field access to everything. For the documents table, uh, view will limit this. We'll say that the employee ID equals the equals the employee ID. Okay, click OK. Same thing for edit. We'll say employee ID equals the employee ID. And click OK. I want them to be able to create new records because again, in the documents table, that's we create a new record to allow them to enter uh, a uh, a file into a, a new container field. Uh, delete, I don't want them to be able to delete, and field access will give them everything. We'll click OK. Layouts, OK. Uh, we have access to the compliance details layout. I just want them to be able to view the layout, but on the records, they can modify everything. Um, same thing for uh, the documents. I just want them to be able to view and not make changes to the layout, but uh, the records they can uh, make changes to. So we'll click OK there. And then value list, you know, Let's say uh, view only, executable only. Uh, extended privileges, this specifies when a file is hosted via this particular method, if it's hosted via WebDirect, if it's hosted via um, uh, FileMaker network sharing, if you have a ODBC uh, connection configured, then this account can access uh, uh, your file. So we're currently being hosted by FileMaker server, so I do want to make sure that this account can access the file when it's hosted. Okay, so I'm going to put a check there. And we have a few other privileges like allow printing. This also allows you to uh, 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 save records as PDF. Um, and then available menu commands. Uh, we'll just leave it at, as minimum right now, but you can actually create your own custom menus 
with the FileMaker Pro Advanced feature, uh, it's right up in the uh, tools menu. So uh, all of these uh, menus right here are the things that you can edit. So I'll click OK. All right, that looks good. Click OK. And then in order to save these changes, it asks for a full access account. So we're going to use the default access account. All right. And then I'm just going to add a quick script here. Okay, we'll call this relogin. This is a, a good tip if you are um, building your solution and uh, you're creating the accounts so you don't have to constantly open and close your file. Just create a quick relogin script. Okay, so we'll save that. And by checking this, it's going to show up in the scripts menu, which means it's going to show up right here. Perfect. All right, so let's save this layout. All right. And now let's re-log in with uh, uh, Lori's um, access. Okay, Lori Delgadil, password, go OK. So it looks like we're still in that, uh, we're still seeing all those total records, right? And we're seeing Lori's uh, record. But if we scroll through, you now only have um, access to her records. You can only make changes to her record. But let's take it a step further. Maybe we just want Lori to see her record uh, you know, by itself. Like if you had vendors, for example, uh, you only want a vendor to see the records related to them. You know, you don't want to see a, a 96 record found set of no access uh, records, right? So let's go ahead and re-log in with the admin account and let's add a new script, okay? Now, scripting is a great way to supplement security. It's not, it shouldn't be the basis for security, okay? A navig get, navigating people in and out of found sets and away from layouts and things like that. It's a supplement for security, all right? But let's create a new um, script and we're gonna call this opener script. So I wanna make sure that um, we create a script where when Lori opens up uh, uh, the database file, she's only gonna see her record. And we're gonna use a found sets, like a find to uh, make sure that happens, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, set a variable, okay? And I'm gonna set a variable for, uh, we're gonna call this uh, account and dollar signs, uh, indicate a, uh, a variable. I'm going to specify again um, uh, information from our current session. I want to use the get account name. Okay. So click OK. So set variable, it, it just grabs dynamic data. Okay. So if you want to get the account name, we're not going to uh, hard code Lori Delgadil and then hard code admin and hard code uh, Jill uh, uh, Bickering. Right. We want to make sure that we're capturing dynamic information. That's what the set variable script allows you to do. So anytime a, um, uh, a session is uh, created, okay, this set variable script is going to uh, grab that information particular to uh, that session, okay? So we want to grab a set variable, the value of the current account name, all right? And I'm going to use a conditional because I don't, if I log in as a admin account or a full access account, I don't want to do I don't want to be put in a particular found set, okay? So uh, my condition is if the value in uh, the account variable equals admin, okay, then exit the script. Don't do anything, right? Otherwise, we want to perform a find uh, for that particular person. And we don't have to go to find mode. We actually have a script step called um, perform find. Okay, so we can enter uh, that particular uh, find criteria. And I'm gonna say where full name equals the value that we grabbed in the variable. Okay. Okay, so if Lori ran the script, for example, uh, set variable, okay, so the dollar sign account value would be Lori Delgadil. If the account, if the value in uh, the uh, variable equals admin, it doesn't. So we're going to jump to the next condition, which is saying pretty much just perform a find for uh, that uh, uh, value. Okay. So let's save that script and let's go to file, file options. All right. And this automatically prompts us to log in with the admin account. This is the way every FileMaker uh, database 
Uh, when you create a new database is the default setting. We're just going to uh, uncheck that. Um, I'm going to choose switch layout to compliance details for iPad and then script triggers. I'm going to choose on first window open. I want to run that opener script and click OK. All right. And that looks good. OK. Let's make sure that these settings stuck. Looks good. All right. So let's go ahead and close this file out. And we'll open up compliance details, use the hosted version. We get prompted to enter our account name and password. So we'll enter Lori Delgado. Click OK. And you can now see that we have, uh, we're put in a found set. Okay, one record out of 96. We can't uh, view anyone else's record, but we can uh, add and, and view the records associated with us. So this is how the uh, employees could come into the solution and update uh, uh, the record without, while maintaining um, employee privacy and without having uh, someone access someone else's uh, record and signing for them. All right, so we created accounts and privilege sets and use scripts and finds to supplement security. We've assured that the data we're working with is accurate. And really in just a few minutes, what was that maybe 25 minutes uh, without any of this talking, we were really able to create a solution that we can access anywhere in our office. It has all of our information in one custom solution and we're always working with one version of the truth. And that provides layers of security to ensure that data, ac uh, data accuracy and staff privacy. And for Carol, that means that we're no longer wasting, uh, wasting too many cycles on an inefficient process. And we're more focused on prioritizing the proper things in our job, which typically means more money for the company. So I'd like to open this up to Q&A. If you haven't already submitted a uh, question, go ahead and please do so now. And meanwhile, while you're doing that, uh, we'll talk about uh, some next steps. So if you haven't already, uh, download FileMaker Go for free on iTunes and download a free trial of FileMaker at FileMaker.com. This web sem seminar will be recorded and posted to the URL you see on your screen. And FileMaker's web seminar page is a, a, it's a great resource for additional web informational sessions. Um, we also have the FileMaker Training Series Basics for free, which is available for download. And uh, we also have the FileMaker Training Series Advanced, which was just released. I'd like to throw in one more um, resource here, the free FileMaker Forums. It uh, you know, requires a login account, but again, it's 100% free. It's a great resource because you have um, access to our uh, developer community. It's, it's highly active. And it's a, a great resource for, um, uh, think for for trying to break down uh, specific functionality um, uh, for development and things like that. A lot of the, a lot of the tutorials I have out there is, is great for uh, building a foundation, but when you want to start uh, looking at specific scripts or uh, specific ways you want to approach things, uh, the forums are a fantastic re uh, resource. And if you're ready to consider licensing and you want to purchase more than five seats, then go ahead and contact your volume licensing sales rep at either the URL posted at the top of your screen or you can call 1-800-725-2747. And FileMaker currently offers a really great uh, annual volume licensing program with monthly prices starting as low as $9 for FileMaker Pro and $29 for FileMaker Server. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into uh, those questions. Just give me a second here. Oops, I actually wanna push this out. All right. Okay. So for the first question, do I have to create accounts for each individual file? Uh, yes, you'll have to create uh, accounts for each individual file. So for example, if um, uh, Lori needed access to a, another FileMaker file, you'll have to create her account there. Um, one thing, if you're using Active Directory or Open Directory, which manages uh, your um, uh, your user accounts, you can actually add the group name into FileMaker and associate a privilege set with that group name, so that can uh, save you some time there. 
Okay, do I need to manually add a photo for uh, each employee? Okay, so you saw me in the solution uh, drag Lori's and Jill's and Chris's photo directly into a photo container field. Uh, that was just one way to approach it. Obviously, if you have uh, you know hundreds of employees, it's a little bit tedious of a pro uh, process, right? I would treat it the same way that we, um, uh, I would approach it the same way how we approach the, uh, the documents. So I would uh, create a table just for the photos and um, I create a relationship between them. You can actually import a folder of photos and that will create a table for you. Um, so that's uh, probably how I, how I would approach that instead of manually uh, dragging a uh, employee's photo into the uh, solution. Okay, um, do the documents you associate with a record get saved with the FileMaker database or are they only links to the files on your computer saved? This is a great question. So uh, there's actually three ways that you can embed the, uh, the uh, photo into your FileMaker database. Uh, the downside of that is, you know, FileMaker is going to uh, uh, it's going to take all of that uh, that size with it, right? So your your file could uh, grow exponentially, and then you have uh, you can store it as a reference. But if uh, your users don't have access to a, uh, a shared volume where that file is uh, located, then you can't uh, see that file. Uh, we solved that with uh, FileMaker 12 with the external storage feature. So you get the best of both worlds. It's in a, um, uh, a folder location that you specify. Uh, you can even encrypt that folder. Uh, the files do not get embedded. So FileMaker doesn't you know, uh, grab all of that, uh, that file size with it. And you don't need to set up a shared file for, um, uh, for your users to see a, a reference. So uh, the way you wanna set that up is make sure that your container fields have the uh, external storage um, uh, enabled okay um the next question how would you set the date sign field to auto enter the date that the signature field uh, was actually signed so what i would use is a script trigger so after uh, we signed uh, the signature field you could have a script trigger that runs um, like on object exit for example and the script would essentially say okay go to the uh date signed uh, field, and then set the field with, again, uh, current session information. We'd use a get function, uh, you know, like get current date. Okay, is FileMaker server required for FileMaker Go use, or can I drag uh, database files to the iPad uh, via iTunes? Okay, good question. Um, let's break this down in a bit, okay? Uh, You'll need FileMaker Server if you want to have access and have all the information, you know, automatically updated, kind of like we saw with the uh, human resources and finance, uh, changing that data entry, or how when we access the solution with FileMaker Go, all of those layout changes were um, were automatically updated uh, on our iOS device, right? Because we're accessing that hosted file. If you're in an area with a bad network or no network at all, then you can um, store your uh, databases directly onto your iOS um, uh, iOS device. Okay, and there's different ways that you can do that. You can use iTunes. You can use a third-party solution like Dropbox. You can email the database to yourself. Uh, you can even uh, put it up on a website and uh, download it. And when you're working with a local copy, obviously that's not going to make the um, that's, the changes aren't going to be reflected on the hosted copy. So you would make your changes. Um, remotely and then when you have a network connection you can import those changes back into the hosted um, file now taking that a little bit further uh, in terms of the syncing the import process itself uh, it's pretty much kind of like an import process and if you're not um, if, you're, if you're updating records that are uh, that no one else is going to be updating uh, when you're out in the field then it's pretty much a straightforward import okay I, I made these uh, changes to these records and import and uh, into the hosted file and, and update the records it's pretty straightforward if you're updating records where other people are going to be updating them at the same time, okay, let's say that you're out in the field and someone in the office is going to be updating the same records, then you have to start applying some business logic into that import, okay? And uh, it's pretty much like whose who's, uh, records are going to keep? Is it based off of time? Is it based off of, you know, if some person's like a manager and another person, you know, works under them, uh, is that uh, the way you're going to decide which changes you're going to keep? Uh, there's actually a really great FileMaker Go Sync Guide, which you can um, uh, download uh, um, 
in FileMaker's uh, TechNet uh, program, which is uh, free to join. You can go to the website, join TechNet, and there's a, uh, a nice uh, FileMaker um, uh, sync guide there that you can uh, uh, view the best practices for. Uh, there's also some third-party uh, software out there as well that kind of takes that responsibility out of your hands uh, in terms of you know handling uh, the scripting and, and things like that to get your information into the uh, uh, hosted file. Um, and TechNet, you can find it at uh, www.fondmaker.com forward slash TechNet. Okay, so that's all the time uh, we have for today. It's been, uh, it's been a blast talking with you guys. And on behalf of FileMaker, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.